if you are thinking that something is just gonna like come to you <laughs> like you know if you're if you're in a place like I was or some you know something where you're just feeling really unsettled or unhappy or you know or st- really struggling with burnout like it's not gonna come to you if you don't put in the work and again if you're like me I had no idea well then but what do I do like how do I figure this out like I I don't know what work to put in you know and so I think that that's what's the value of this program is that again you've done this you figured it out um because that's some of your strengths you know it's kind of like figure, like figure it out and like make the process but like but for most of us like that's not going to come naturally to us at all Welcome back, friends, to the Discovering Your Calling podcast. I am your host, Sherry Miter, and I am here with one of my clients, Andrea. And Andrea is actually one of my A-plus students, and I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek because she also comes from the educational world, too. So the A-plus really means something in her world. But Andrea, thank you so much for being here and just sharing your experience of being one of my clients in the Discovering Your Calling program. We actually worked one on one, but just um, if you want to introduce yourself and share a little bit about who you are, what you're doing right now, and then we'll go back and talk about the your experience in the Academy. Sounds great. Well, thanks, Sherry, for having me. I, uh, as you said, I'm an educator. I spent about 20 years in public education. I was a teacher. I was a leader of other teachers in professional development. I was a mentor. And then uh, currently, I am working on starting my business uh, called Elm Tree Education Consulting. I actually have my own business license and everything. Um, and uh, getting that kind of like up and running after we completed our program. Yeah, which is super exciting. And if you're watching the video, you see both Andrea and I kind of chuckle at that because when we first started working together, one of the question, a question in one of the questionnaires I send my clients has something about, have you ever thought about owning your own business? And you were pretty much a big no, <laughs> like, exactly. no, I'm not going to do it. And, <laughs> and here we are, here we are. So, and I definitely want to come back to, um, we'll come back around to the Elm uh, and, and all that went into naming the business and a little bit about what that is um, at the end of the podcast. But I want to go back to where it was when you heard about the Discovering Your Calling Academy and what was going on in your life that made you think, oh, maybe this is for me. Yeah. So I'll go back a little bit further just because I think it creates a good context. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 20, uh, 2022, March, February, I guess it was, I started feeling really burnt out. Um, I mean, we all lived through the pandemic and kind of know what that was like. Um, I had two young children at home during that, trying to work from home. And then also just what was going on in education, trying to navigate and deal with the pandemic and then yet trying to still instruct students. Plus the nature of my role of being a mentor for first and second year teachers is, you know, those people already have a lot of stress in their life because it's a lot of new at them all at once. But then they also um we're dealing with the pandemic and then i just had some other people that had like some weird situate personal situations that were going on and i was trying to kind of feel some compassion fatigue i mean there's just all sorts of reasons and i went to my boss and i said i don't think i can i can't keep doing this um there were some medical things going on there was just there's some big reasons that she was super supportive and i dropped down in my hours uh, but then i also s- decided i'm going to take the school year off so I'm going to take the 2022, 23 school year and just take a leave of absence because I just feel like I am so burnt out right now and I'm not going to do myself or the people I serve any good continuing to do this. And I was fortunately in, you know, in a position to be able to do that with my family financially. And that was an interesting experience, uh, you know, taking a step away when I didn't have anything like outwardly wrong you know I wasn't needing to take care of an aging parent or I wasn't needing to like have some sort of treatment for an illness and so what that also put me kind of an interesting position of trying to kind of like tell people this is why I need to do this and and I need to do this because it's not that common really in education that you do just take a step away so 
I had that year off and this past year, and I just realized I still wasn't feeling any better. I wasn't feeling any lighter. And especially when the calendar ticked over to 2023 and I needed to make a decision because of the way our teacher contract works in my district, I had to like say, yes, I'm coming back or no, I'm not. And, um, it was really heavy on my mind and I was really thinking a lot about it. And I ultimately made the decision to not go back, but then I had no idea what I was going to (laughs) do. And I've always been the girl with a plan. And so to not suddenly to not have a plan and to not have a goal and to not have something I was working towards um, was super hard. And I was feeling super lost and overwhelmed because usually I kind of knew the path. And I literally was in like, just to kind of, you know, be a little silly with, with the program. I'm like, I was in uncharted waters. Like I really did not know what I was doing. Right. Like I had no clue. And I pretty quickly realized I was going to need to get help with that. I just didn't know who. And very serendipitously, um, you happened to interview one of my very best friends, Elise Enriquez, and for one of your earlier podcast episodes. And she, after that conversation with you, she called me and said, I think you need to talk to Sherry. Like I, I love her vibe. Like, I think you should just connect like all those things. And so, uh, when I, when I kind of like looked a little bit into the program and kind of like what it entailed, I was curious. I also was familiar with Clifton strengths. So that wasn't like a new assessment for me. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I kind of know what that assessment's about. And then I don't know, we had a, I think I signed up for one of the like calls just to like, see how, we connected or Mm -hmm. kind of that kind of vibe. And, um, I think the biggest thing for me, because of the fact that like, I, you know, this whole year, I haven't had any income coming into the family. And that's been an interesting adjustment that I wasn't realizing I was, I don't know, maybe part of my identity a little bit. And so I think the only thing that was holding me back, because I I feel like I'd sort of already decided I'm going to have to work with somebody because I don't know how to figure this out. Like, I really don't know how to figure this out. Do I leave education? Do I stay in education? Do I, you know, like all these things was that like spending money on something when I'm not making money felt was probably like one of the biggest holdups where I was just like, but I'm not making any money. You know, do I have enough money to afford this? And in the end, like it was actually very affordable. And my husband was very supportive and was like, yes, you should do this. If this is going to help you, you should do this. And uh, it turned out to be one of the best decisions for sure. Because I mean, it's, it really has changed my life for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like so, dramatically. Which, yeah. Which I definitely want to, you know, go into that much, much deeper, but I want to just pause here for a minute because I think the fact that you recognize that you just needed a break. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I think there's so many people, I mean, you can look at any stats out there. So many people are in that position, whether they, a lot of educators for sure, you yeah. know, in the, in the medical field and just regular jobs today, everybody's got so stressed out, whether it was from COVID or they were already leading up to that. Mm-hmm. And some are in a position to be able to take that sabbatical. Some can't, but I think I want to applaud you. First of all, just to say that you recognize that wait, I'm not serving anybody Mm -hmm. right now. And that you had to take care of yourself first. That's Mm -hmm. a huge decision to do. And I know that wasn't an easy decision to do. So I think just recognizing that, and I think for anybody listening, whether you do anything with the discovering your calling or not, to just be okay with that. If you need to say, I just need a time (laughs) out, even if it's a month. 90 days, like if you're Mm -hmm. not serving anybody, your family, you're at work or yourself, then do what you have to do to get through that. Yeah. And I think your point about it being really hard, it was a really hard decision. Like, yeah, I, you know, I might be saying like, oh, I did this and I did this, but like, that was not an easy decision. That was lots of talks. That was lots of conversation. That was lots of things leading up to it. And when you're in a helping profession, I think it's also really hard to uh take a step back because you're just you're naturally there to help and serve others and so for you to say i need to focus on me right now sometimes feels really hard because like then what are who are you letting down or who are you abandoning or who you know like all those kinds of things but ultimately yeah i needed it wasn't it wasn't i wasn't well Mm -hmm. i was not well i needed to i needed to stop 
Yeah. And like you said, it's easy to make that decision if there's a physical, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. oh, I have this, yeah. ail-. not that we want to wish that we have an ailment, but, you know, no. I have this or I have, like you said, elderly parents I need to take care of. But there's a reason, but it's so hard when it's just like, just I need a mental break or mm-hmm. I'm going to mentally break. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I just need to, yeah. you know, um, and I would imagine, too, that. Well, let me ask you, I don't want to imagine how did that like where you were when you decided you needed to take that sabbatical and then where you are now, how has all that affected your family dynamics and your kids and your relationship with your husband? How is that? How was it? And then how is it now? Yeah, I would say that pretty big time, you know, and I think that I, well, as you know, I have a strong sense of responsibility. It's one (laughs) of my, it's one of my strengths. Um, And so I wouldn't ever let my um, emotional state completely prevent me from being a parent. But was I showing up as my best self? Probably not. Right. And so and then that would be a lot of other extra guilt that would just like cycle to make me feel even worse. Like, you know, because like you Mm -hmm. said, I wasn't I it was it was a thing where I just like I need to take care of me so that I could take care of other people. And I just wasn't feeling like I was doing well in any one thing. Like I just felt like it was all like little bits here and there. And it was just so sporadic. So I think the one thing that like I notice now for sure um, is that I'm able to be a lot more present. I, um, we, our family, we were talking about this before we started the podcast, but my family just took like a two week RV trip through, um, uh, Wyoming and went, I, I live in Washington state. And so we went, you know, we drove through Wyoming and Montana and, and went to the black Hills and South Dakota and Nebraska. And, um, that whole time I just really, I, there was one day where I realized, Oh my gosh, like I'm really here. Like the last time, last summer, when we took a, we didn't take that long of a trip last summer, but when we took a trip last summer, I remember that that whole time I was kind of just like going through the motions. I was kind of on autopilot and I, and I noticed it this, this last couple of weeks that, wow, I'm like really here with my family. Like, and I'm, I'm not worried about what's going to come next. I'm not worried about like, I really didn't actually think anything about business stuff that I needed to do. Like I did a lot leading up to it. And then now I've kind of like dove back into it, but, but really, I really did take a step away. And I, I was not like that a year ago by any means. So wow. that's awesome. That's, yeah, that's so great to hear. And I mean, that's what we should be able to do, right? I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'd say probably 90% of us don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've been guilty of that of having vacations where I really wasn't mentally present because I was so worried about everything else going on. But you yeah. know, to be able to do that, what a gift, you know, to really be present because our kids sense that. Yeah. For like, sure. We may think that we're present and going through the motions and they don't notice, but they do. They totally do. Totally. Yeah. Do. My, yeah. my, um, she's almost 10. She's going to be 10 in August. Um, my oldest, I remember one day she was like, mama, are you, are you stressed right now? <laughs> I was like, actually I am feeling kind of stressed right now because <laughs> you know, these things are going on. But, but like, like you said, like they, she totally picks it up. Like and she's very empathetic. Um, and she, so she can kind of read a room too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, they're, they're not oblivious to what's going on. No, no, they know way more than we give them credit for sometimes. Yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 So, um, and then I also want to just touch, you said something about just feeling that that guilt of like, wait a minute, I'm not bringing in money. Should I spend money? And I think that's such a hard concept for especially, I hate to stereotype it, but I feel like it is as women, mm-hmm. we have a really hard time sometimes investing in ourselves, especially in something like this, where there really isn't. I was just talking to somebody else today about this, that the promise isn't a tangible, like do this program and you'll 10 X your income or do this program and you're going to have, you know, this podcast done. There's not really a tangible promise at the end. Yeah. Which I'm sure makes it a bigger struggle to invest in. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
So what was it knowing that, like, what was it that, what was the promise that you heard from the program, whether it was in our conversation or what was, you know, what you read about it Mm -hmm. that made you say yes to yourself and investing in yourself? I think it was, you know, one thing was you had also suggested I listen to one of your podcasts, I think where your husband's interviewing you. And, um, you know, I read, I read about the program, like, okay, there's going to be phases and there's those, you know, and you kind of had gone over it with me, but I feel like when I kind of listened to like your journey, um, and I kind of heard like your story while it wasn't same, you know, not same sector or anything like it, you know, it, there was some similarities of like how you like weren't feeling right. And those kinds of things. I thought, I think because that just like, let, let my vision, like, this is a woman who's done this before, like, you know, and she did it. And, you know, I think you even said, or maybe it says it on your website, like, you know, let me kind of show you what it took me three years to figure out, <laughs> like, you know, like in like three months. you know. And so, and I, so I was like, okay, here's somebody who is, who's, who's gone that path before, who's like, you know, gone through the, a big change or, you know, um, you might've been in a different time of life than I am, but still you had, you had carved that way. And so I think that to me, like made me want to be part of, of this program versus like, there are some other life coaches that I actually happen to know through other people that, you know, I considered working with. Um, but I think it was just the fact that like, there was a clear, I also like systems as you also know with consistency. So like, I just feel like there was like a clear, like there was something clear for me and that was what was helping me because at that point in time, everything felt so foggy because I just really didn't know where to go. So it just felt like there's much more, there's a GPS for it. You know, I guess it's kind of what I'm going to say. Um, and yeah, you weren't promising anything. You weren't saying like at the end of this, you're going to know, exa- you know, like exactly what you're going to do. Like, um, but I also kind of had some faith in myself that if I had a little help, I could figure it out too. I think that's also another piece. Mm, I love that. I love that. And that's, yeah, that's a huge piece, a huge piece mm-hmm. that you have to know that, yeah, I, it, there's a laid out curriculum, you know, you get a mm-hmm. workbook, I take you through the phases. They are exactly what I did. Like you just shared, <laughs> I did, took me three years <laughs> of doing these steps and I didn't know I was doing these steps as I was doing them. It took mm-hmm. reflection back to realize like, oh yeah, there was a pattern that I did and that's what I teach people to do. And it is effective, but you've got to step into it with like, okay, I'm going to do the work. I'm going to follow the path. You know, it is a proven system. And that's what's going to get you results to clarity. Mm -hmm. Like there's just Mm -hmm. some clarity. So let's talk about that. What do you feel like now that you went through it? What what's on this other side now for you? What did you get out of the program? Yeah, um, one of the biggest things for me, I think, was just that deep dive that we did into understanding like who makes me Andrea, you know, like, what is it that makes me, me, like, what are the things that, that I bring to the world? And also I think maybe even more importantly was that part of me looking to see like, and then what do I need? (laughs) Like, what is it that I need? Like, because of these things, like, because I am a high learner, I need this, you know, because I'm a high, whatever. And I there was just like this like light bulb moment of like, you know, no wonder I have made the choices I've made. Like it makes so much sense when I see this, you know, like when I can now look back and then I see this information, I'm like, Oh, well, of course I made these choices. And when people didn't understand it, it's probably because that's not their strengths, you know, or that's not, they would have been okay in that, in that situation. I mean, I had some friends that were like, but you have a great job, Andrea. Why would you leave that job? It's such a great, it's like one of the best jobs in the school district. And I was like, you're right. It's fabulous. But like, I can't, I'm not, I don't want to do anymore, (laughs) you know? And so I felt like there was a lot of like, at first there was a lot of me trying to convince people why I was doing what I was doing or trying to make, um, like give them reasons so that they could just like understand. And finally I was like, you know what? I don't, 
that's on them if they understand or not. Like I, this is who I am. And now this is who I'm realizing what I need. And I'm going to work towards creating the space for that, like that I will get what I need. Um, and, um, you know, like I stopped apologizing, I guess, for who I am in a way. And so that, that part, that, that was a lot of clarity for me right there. Like, just to like, go like, Oh, this is it. (laughs) This is Andrea, (laughs) you know? And so like, take care of Andrea by doing these things, you know, and that, and that, that, um, helps me both personally and professionally really. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And what Andrea's, uh, talking about a big, big, big piece of this whole program is tied to the Clifton Strengths Assessment. Mm-hmm. And I use that because one, it's just, it's such a unique assessment that just really helps you see who you are. You are one in 33 million, you know, it's not how you fit into a box. It's how you stand out. <laughs> it's yeah. what makes you unique. But one of the, one of the pieces that we use is a form that tells you based on your unique talent strengths, what do you need? What environment basically do you need to thrive? Mm -hmm. And are those needs being met? And to make sure that whatever you create in the future, whether it be at your current career or, um, you know, creating something new is that it has that environment for you to thrive, you Mm -hmm. know, and, and I'm looking at Andrew, your plant, I don't know, is that a cactus behind you or what is it? Yes, it is. It is actually, it's my husband's cactus. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) But, you know, a cactus needs a different environment than a rose bush. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And if you try to give, you know, dry out a rose bush, it's going to (laughs) die. Whereas if you try to overwater the cactus, it's not going to you know, do well. So we we have to have the just like the plants, we have to have the right environment in order to thrive. And when we can thrive, that's when we can be our best. And what I love is that it's not just me telling you that, or it's not just you telling yourself that it's in black and white. So you can't ignore the facts, right? It's like, yeah, oh, there it is. There it is. Um, So, you know, I'm glad that that part was impactful. Um, And I do hear from most of the, you know, the alumni of the suits and stuff that that really honing in on the strengths is huge, mm-hmm. a huge, huge is, piece. Huge. Yeah. Especially because I had taken that assessment a couple of times, <laughs> but um, it wasn't until we dug in so deeply that I really got it. Like, I think before I was like, Oh yeah, that sounds like me. You know, and it was a one day, it was a one day meeting where we like looked at our results together as a team and all those kinds of things. And, you know, it's fun to like have the, do these personality assessments or, you know, work style assessments. But like, because we had done so much work, like just really slowing that down and looking at it. And I had time in between to like, let it um, sit. Like, that's the other thing too, is I think that um, sometimes when you get uh, information, a lot of information in like a really short amount period of time, you don't have, you don't have time to like, let it like just like marinate and like, understand it and because it wasn't like a you know it wasn't like we did this 12 days in a row this was over time so I could really reflect and let that just I don't know be I think that's like the best learning anyway it's not when you try to like dump a whole bunch of information at people and don't let them have any time to process Right, right. So talk a little bit more about that. The self, I call it the self work because, you know, homework always has this bad, like nobody wants homework. (laughs) So, uh, you know, talk a little bit more about what that was like for you to have self work. Yeah, just it gave me that space to reflect and to think. And I would say that, you know, if you're going to invest in the program, you do have to, you have to do that work. You can't kind of, you can't, not do it because then that's not going to be you're not going to get the outcomes that you want no if you don't actually put the time into it so and there's things that you and I could discuss but there's all but you're also not me you're not you, you know this isn't your life like <laughs> you know there's right. things that I actually have to like think about like but what do I really want or you know what is my vision or you know what um kind of impact do I want to have on the world or, you know, all those things like you can't, you can't tell me that. And just us having conversation necessarily doesn't always, sometimes things came out just because I'm a verbal processor anyway. But, um, I think I just, yeah, just to let it sit too. And, um, I don't know. 
it just produces more thought and understanding and you're able to set better goals. I think also too, because you're not trying to rush your way through something or like the first idea that comes to you or those kinds of things. Right. Right. So each week, and again, this is where I say you are such an A plus student because (laughs) you did always do the work you invested, not just financially into the program, but you invested the time into the Mm -hmm. program yeah. So that you didn't waste because, you know, it'd be easy to show up for the one hour conversation or the, you know, the sessions, mm-hmm. live sessions. But then if you don't do the work in between, like you just shared, you're not going to get the value because it, it is no. a lot of self-reflection and a lot of answering your own questions that nobody mm-hmm. else can answer for you. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so. Anything else about the program itself that kind of stood out to you that you want to speak to or any other parts that you enjoyed that we didn't cover yet? Um, I think that uh, for me, taking it individually was a value. I know that you have a group program as well, but I just and, and there I feel like there's a space and time where you definitely love to be part of a group because you can kind of hear what somebody else is saying. And then that kind of like furthers your thinking. But where I was mentally when I met you, <laughs> I feel like I needed to really just like, let's focus on me right now, like not worry about other people. So for me personally, I could see how some folks would really thrive off of a group setting, but I really appreciated the one-on-oneness of it because of just where I was like, I just feel like I, yeah, I don't know how that, having that like individualized attention was, was pretty crucial. And, um, the other thing I would say is, I don't know if it's like the learner in me or what, but like those sessions really fed me. Like it was funny because the day after we would have our, you know, like usually they were on Thursday. So like we'd have our, our talk on Thursday and then like right afterwards, um, I would usually, because my, my best friend is very invested in this and she's like, no, I want to hear how it's going with Sherry. So I would, I would usually get on Marco Polo, which is an app, you know, a video uh, chatting app on your phone. And I would do it. I would do my weekly Sherry download. And <laughs> she would always say like you, that your energy, like after you've had those sessions with Sherry is just so high. Like, you're just like, you're so just animated and excited and just like, you know, filled with just energy. (laughs) And, um, so I guess I would say that that was also very helpful too. That I just, that or just something I enjoyed is that I, I just really dug it. Like I dug the time and obviously it showed because people noticed, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And, and again, like we shared earlier, it's not necessarily a tangible X, Y, Z result, but that's a tangible result in itself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that yeah. the energy, the, you know, what your friends notice, what your family notices on how you show up again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I do remember Elise even saying something about, thank you for giving me my best friend back again. Her energy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Which, you know, just side note for anybody listening that has that like thought of like, oh, do I want to invest in something for myself? It's like, but you're doing it for others because what you gain out of it, Mm -hmm. you know, if you feel like Andrea and like I had when I did this myself, like that you've lost your soul, you've lost who you really are. And you know, you know, you're better than this. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're feeling in that space and this is a gift you give to yourself, but others around you as well, really. Um, Oh, just it, it's funny you saying about the one on one versus the group. And and it's as the person facilitating both. It's mm-hmm. very interesting because I, I see the benefits of both. You know, both the one on one has definitely benefits and both and the group definitely has some benefits that the one on one doesn't get, you know, of the having that camaraderie mm-hmm. and other people going through it at the same time. There's definitely a benefit to that. Um and I'm racking my brain trying to figure out how can I do both? <laughs> how can there be like yeah. a hybrid? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I really do that. think that is the ideal way for this to maximize the results mm-hmm. is to have a piece mm-hmm. that's group, but a piece that's one-on-one as well. So 
if you think of any ideas, Andrea, let me know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how could okay. this be a hybrid of, that in, incorporates both pieces? Um, so, as we start to kind of wrap things up, I want to give you time now to kind of share, like, what is what became the thing that you realize is your current purpose, your that's going to give you that fulfillment and that you got clarity on. Um, you already mentioned the Elm, but there's more to it than just like, I love the whole process you went through to create the name too. And mm -hmm. what that is and what your what's next, I guess we'll call it that you're working on now, if you want to take some time to share about that. Yeah. Well, as you mentioned at the beginning, yeah. Um, I have, as my friends know there, I have strong opinions about many things. And the two strong opinions I had was I was never, ever, ever going to work in food service. And I wasn't going to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so <and> so <laughs> how that like all like evolved of me going I'm like, well, maybe I do want to be an entrepreneur. Like, wait, like what I hadn't thought about it from this angle um, was like you said, that was kind of a, that, that was part of the process too, for me was like to say, um, okay, maybe I've been wrong. Maybe I, maybe I do want to do this. Um, so yeah, I think when I came to you, I was thinking like, I'm going to figure out my what's next. I just don't think it's going to be me starting a business, but it's like, it'll be my what next. And then the more that we kept talking about how the things that were like, this is what I want to have in my life. And like flexibility was a big one. And, um, making sure that I can be present for kid things, my kid things, um, and, um, finding some more, I think we, I think what you called it was like harmony, not necessarily work life balance, but harmony. Um, I just kept realizing like, well, but if I was working for somebody else, is that going to provide those, is that going to provide that? for me. And, and I was unsure <laughs> that that would be the case. Plus I'd kind of already, I, I realized pretty quickly, like, no, I want to stay in education. Like this is really important to me. This is part of who I am and some things that I'm passionate about, but I don't want to be an administrator, you know, and there's, there isn't a lot of like growth in education, unless you want to go that way. Like, um, other, you know, there's just isn't that many opportunities. You're basically just, you're a teacher or you're like an administrator, <laughs> you, know, you know? And so, and I mean, I guess other people can be like, they can move from being like a paraprofessional to a teacher, but, but, but that's pretty much it. And, um, and so I also just kind of felt like, I don't think the grass is going to be greener for me in any other place and who I am needs new challenges and who I am again, coming back to my strengths and like, what do I need? I was like, I've kind of already explored all the options. Like, I don't really have any other options. So um, I feel like that's kind of those kind of pieces as they started coming together made me realize like, okay, maybe I really need to like take a second look at thinking about being an entrepreneur. <laughs> so, so, so uh, through all that work um, and I can't even remember exactly what phase it like started clicking in, but you know, like you had said, I'm putting all the pieces of the puzzle in the basket and collecting them kind of all along the way. And then, you know, there was things where I just started getting really clear, like whatever session that was where we had, where I realized like, ding, like, I don't want to work with teachers who don't want to work with me. Like, and that came from a conversation because, you know, I've been kind of exploring other things and having other conversations about like, how could I you know, use the next, the connections I have in the district that I used to work for and like still do some work. But then I realized like a lot of those things or those offers that, that seem that might be available, were going to be me going and helping people who are struggling. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying that those people don't need support and help, but for what I have been already doing for the last several years, it was going to kind of be more of the same. And I wanted to move away from that and get back to what I really care about, which is literacy. And, um, and so for me, it meant thinking about how could I pull in all the things that I want to have, which is, I want to be, I want to have some challenge, but I also want to be helping, um, teachers. And again, I'll, I'll keep, I know, I don't mean to keep going back to the Clifton strengths, but that was such a, like a big piece of my, my journey is like, you know, I am a developer. I am a relator. I am, I do have empathy. Like there is that part of me that kind of all comes together to really want to support other people. 
And so like, I wanted that to happen, but there's also this like intellection side of me and this learner and input side that you really highlighted for me and started making me realize just how much I get energy from having conversations about teaching with, with people. Like I really get a lot of energy out of that. So I didn't want it always to be me doing the output. You know, I wanted to also have some, like some, some of the input kind of coming in. And so I don't know, through that whole series, <laughs> I kind of eliminated, I was like, well, I want people who want to work with me. Um, and I also don't want to have to travel, but I also want to be able to have a wider reach. So maybe I could create something that could be mostly virtual, but yet, you know, I could have room to do different things if I wanted to. And it all just came to me that one day where I was trying to sketch some stuff out of like, what would this look like? What would that look like? How would I be using my strengths? All, all these things. I just like made like a whole chart. I know you remember this, like <laughs> a whole chart. I got done with all of it. Like, what are the pitfalls that I want to watch out for? All these things. And I was like, okay, I do think I want like a mastermind group because I do want there to be some collaboration and I want to create community and I want to also use my strengths to consult and coach. And if I think of all those four things, coaching, consulting, collaboration, and community, and like, like, and put them all together to provide something that would be ongoing professional development. Cause just like your program, like, you know, it doesn't have to be ongoing forever, but not a one and done workshop and, um, and really helping teachers who are maybe feeling like I am because there's either no resources to support them in their school, or they are like, maybe they're in a remote region where there just isn't like a lot of PD around them for some reason, but they can totally get on a zoom, you know, um, or just, just, thinking about trying to keep people who are good teachers in the profession, people who are just like hungry to keep growing in their practice. So I pulled like all those together. So when, when I started like sketching this out, like in my journal, I was like, okay, so like uh, mastermind, like what could I do? And then all of a sudden I was like elementary literacy mastermind. And then I was like, Elm, oh my gosh. And then like, Sherry knows I did a deep dive in the Elm tree. <laughs> I was like, it totally connects. Like it, there was just like, so many things that were just like, Oh my gosh, Elm is perfect. It's so perfect. And it keeps it so that, you know, I'm not, um, it can still grow like Elm right now means elementary literacy mastermind, but people don't have to like, if I decide to move away from masterminds or I do something else, like it keeps it kind of open, but it's also like really meaningful to my beginnings. So I think that, um, it just felt very like the, I just love when things just all of a sudden start coming together and you're like, yep, this is it. I'm very sure. Like, I know that this is it. And that's where I am. So yeah, I, after we stopped working together, I like applied for a business license and, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I've set up a bank business bank account and, um, I've done some different things. I've reached out to a friend of mine who's a graphic designer and I'm working with him and he's helping me come up with like a logo and, um, just, just some, just little things. And then my big hope for the fall is that I can get going like a beta group of just like, this is my idea of how this mastermind is going to work. Let's give it a try. And, um, and then I can make some tweaks and adjustments and see like what, what works, what, what doesn't, but I'm super excited. And, um, just kind of like how the program that I have in my head, um, that I think is going to meet different needs that aren't being met. Um, I'm so jazzed about like if I was still in the classroom, I would love this. Like I would want to be a part of this. And and I know there's those teachers like me out there that would want to be a part of this. So that's why I think I think I've found something that's going to be filling a need that isn't met necessarily everywhere. Right, right. And that's such a huge thing. It's when you create something that you would want to be a part of. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, like, OK, because like you said, there's other people out there that are feeling the same way. So, yeah. And I love that you're you're willing to just step into it. And, you know, we've talked about this and I say this a lot to other people, too. And on the podcast, it's like it's it's the first step. Like, we don't know what it's going to look like five years, 10 years down the yeah. road. And we're not supposed to know because it, it will morph. It It won't look the same. 
no business ever does. If it is, it's stale. <laughs> Your mm-hmm. business looks yeah. the same 10 years down the road that it looked when it, you started. You've gotten stale. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As we grow, we adjust, we learn new things. We have other people that like, oh, have you ever thought of this? Or, you know, so it, it will morph and tweak, which keeps it exciting and keeps it fresh mm-hmm. and new. But, you know, to start here, I think is great. And I love, you know, just hearing your excitement. Um, And it was it was so fun to watch as, you know, and we we talk about in the program, just I keep always saying to the students, you're just collecting puzzle pieces. In the beginning, we don't have a box. We don't have a lid. (laughs) We have no idea what this puzzle is going to look like. And I know you all hate hearing that. You hate it. (laughs) That's not what you want me to say, but it's the truth. But it's so fun when I get to watch people's puzzles start to become a picture, you Mm -hmm. know, to see the outline get formed. And then it's like, okay, I think I'm onto something. And now you can start putting the pieces in the middle and it's not finished yet. You know, the puzzle's Mm -hmm. not, but it looks like something now you can see where it's starting to look like this elm tree, you know, and Mm -hmm. the teachers that are going to be, um, impacted by yeah. your program. You know, that's the exciting part of the journey. Um, and, and the one thing I would, I would say about that is that when you're in the process and like you're in one of the earlier phases and you're just like, you, you can't rush it. You cannot rush the process. And that I think can get frustrating for someone like me who wants to be working towards something, like you said, working towards something very clear, <laughs> like, like, what am I going to have at the end of this? And so when it feels a little bit nebulous, like you've got to just have faith and keep going through it because it will become clear. It, it, the fog, like I said, well, it lifted for me. Like I knew what was happening and it was like, oh, this is it. Like, this is what mm-hmm. it's supposed to be. But if you don't kind of like let yourself be a little uncomfortable, which I, I'm, I am saying this knowing it's like pot kettle here because I <laughs> don't like being uncomfortable and not knowing where I'm going. Um, but you, if you do like, it's going to come, yeah. but you have to like, you have to go through the steps. Otherwise it's not, you can't jump ahead and skip because right. you're not going to no. have a no. clear. Yeah. Picture. And you got to do the work. Like you already said, you have yeah. to do the work yeah. or the puzzle pieces don't come together. Yeah. It's yeah. still muddy at the end if you don't Mm -hmm. do the self work throughout it, because I'm there to be the guide, but I'm just walking alongside you with the guide. You got to tell me where to go. You know, I'll shine Mm -hmm. the light for the next few feet, but you know, it's, it's, it's a mutual process. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, Andrea, you know, it was a joy to work with you in the program and I know we're going to continue to work. Now we're creating Mm -hmm. your calling, which is so fun that you get to go in that next step of the journey with you. Um, The last question I have for you is what, and you've already kind of answered this, but what would you say to that person who's maybe listening and they're wondering, is this possibly the right next step for me? But they're kind of nervous to invest in themselves and invest in the time. Um, What would you say to that person? I think that if you are thinking that something is just going to like come to you, (laughs) <laughs> like, you know, if you're, if you're in a place like I was or some, you know, something where you're just feeling really unsettled or unhappy or, you know, or st- really struggling with burnout, like it's not going to come to you if you don't put in the work. And again, if you're like me, I had no idea. Well then, but what do I do? Like, how do I figure this out? Like, I, I don't know what work to put in, you know? And so I think that That's what's the value of this program is that, again, you've done this, you figured it out um, because that's some of your strengths, you know, like figure figure it out and like make the process. But like, but for most of us, like that's not going to come naturally to us at all. And also, I think a lot of um, messages that we have about in our heads, the tape that we have in our heads about ourselves or about what it should be like or what I should be able to do or, you know. A lot of anchors, the anchors, yes, the anchors, the anchors. I love the anchors. I was actually just talking to another one of your uh, students this weekend about it. Um, and, um, so if you're not clear, like that's why you need to have the help. Like you said, like you can be the guide, you know, but, but you're not, you don't have all the answers. You're just being that side by side. 
you know, in the journey and actually just like having that support, like some emotional support and like just like mental support of you're thinking at all is super valuable. So yeah, I know it can be hard, especially like you said, as like a mom and a woman and like to like try to like invest in yourself instead of, you know, putting yourself first. I know that's always really hard. It's like the cliche of all moms is like, it's really hard to put yourself first, but you're not going to get the results if you don't put the time in and you don't put the investment in both. Yeah. Just for the betterness of yourself. And like you said, like how you then now like present yourself into the world and who, how you show up for other people. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent to make that. And um, yeah. And have the steps that, because I think there are a lot of programs out there like career change programs, but I feel like there's a lot of missing pieces to it. Mm -hmm. And in the discovering your calling, we hit on all the little missing pieces that seem very little, like you'd mentioned the one about uh, just what do I need on the needs, you know, yeah. the bring needs sheet like that yeah. was huge for you, you know, so you never know which piece is going to be the thing that like, oh, <laughs> that's what I needed. Um, yeah. yeah. So we hit on all those little things that a lot of other programs, I or I yeah, I don't even know if there are other programs like this. There's a lot of life coaches, a lot of career coaches, mm -hmm. but to have the step by step. Okay, this is what yeah. you do next. This is what you do next. Yeah, not that it's easy, but it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you again for sharing your experience, for being a, you know, for trusting me, trusting Elise to say, yeah, <laughs> yes. listen to her and then trusting me to be that guide for you and step into this journey with me. It was definitely a pleasure and, um, you know, to be a part of this. And I, I really am excited to watch what happens next and all the teachers lives that you're going to impact with your ELM program, because I think it's so unique, but it's so needed um, knowing other teachers in my life that mm -hmm. I can see where that's going to make a great impact on those. And, and that's the cool thing, that whole ripple effect too, that we can have yes. on the world when you yeah. create that thing. Um, and how can, because you do have an awesome blog and it's geared towards teachers, but the things you write, I think other people even can kind of pick up on some things too, but how can they follow your journey, Andrea? Yeah. So, um, right now I do have a website, it's called edu coachful. So it's E D U and then coach C O A C H F U L dot com. Um, and that was honestly just because Sherry was like, just start a blog. <laughs> then again, there was like some other things and I didn't have anything formulated of what else I wanted to do. So I just came up with the domain name. Um, but it's called the opinionated educator. And, um, yeah, I tried to post something weekly except for when I was on vacation and, uh, yeah, you're right. Sometimes my audience is actually like, Hey, people who are not teachers, this is, this is for you to kind of see behind the curtain of what it's really like when you are a teacher. And also sometimes it's like, those of you who are in the trenches, like here's some things to think about. And yeah, I try to weave in pop culture cause that's who I am. And I try to, you know, keep it, keep it light, but yet I am opinionated. And so I do share my opinions and strong feelings I have about things. <laughs> yes. So which I love, I absolutely love. So I will put the show, the links in the show notes for that. Um, and I'm also going to put the link for the podcast that you mentioned where I, my husband interviewed I <laughs> and yes. that journey. Um, so if anybody's curious about that too, I'll have that in the show notes as well. So, so thank you listeners for being here today and listening. Follow Andrea's journey. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions about the Discovering Your Calling Academy. Um, we do have the group is opening up. But of course, also the one on one, like Andrea did, too, is always an option. Um, and Andrea, thank you again for taking the time today to to be here and share your experience. Of course, because I. I feel like I owe you so much. <laughs> so happy to do it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. 